வெல்கம் டு மை சேனல் ஃபிசிக்ஸ் ஃபார் எவ்ரி ஒன் மை நேம் இஸ் கனகராஜ் நடராஜன் ஸோ டுடே டாபிக் இஸ் இங்க்ஸ் டபுள் ஸ்லிட் எக்ஸ்பெரிமெண்ட் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் இங்க்ஸ் டபுள் ஸ்லிட் எக்ஸ்பெரிமெண்ட் வி ஷுட் நோ அபவுட் சூப்பர் பொசிஷன் ஆஃப் வேவ்ஸ் கொஹரன் சோர்சஸ் ஆஃப் லைட் இன்டர்ஃபியரன்ஸ் ஆஃப் லைட் வாட் இஸ் கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்டிவ் இன்டர்ஃபியரன்ஸ் and what is destructive interference after this we will be learning inks double slit experiment in detail the next we will be seeing some tips and tricks for shortcuts for solving problems in competitive exam superposition of waves when two similar waves propagate simultaneously then the resultant displacement is given by the formula y vector equals y1 vector plus y2 vector here we are going to deal this light wave as mechanical wave then only we can able to explain the x double slit experiment we are not using electromagnetic waves in explaining this x double slit experiment this is all good right coherent sources of light sources of light emitting light of same wavelength of course same frequency having zero or constant phase difference are called coherent sources of light interference of light redistribution of energy due to superposition of wave is called interference of light very simple idea superposition of waves coherent sources of light and interference of light now let us learn about constructive interference now let me close one source here s1 i close s1 now the wave coming from s2 reach the point o it has how many wave one wave two wave and three wave right good let me open the s1 and let me close s2 now the waves are coming from s1 that reaches o how many waves are here one up one down one wave two wave and three wave right so s1 s2 are equal distance from o so the number of waves between s1 o and s2 o are equal so the point o receives waves from s1 and s2 are in in phase right they vibrate together right that's what you need to understand so let us now look at what happens when two waves are coming from s1 s2 reaching o look at o the two waves reaching o have the same state of vibration the next moment they two together goes up so this is called constructive interference gives a bright band the path difference between s2 o and s1 o the difference in path traveled by the wave that is called path difference that is here delta which is equal to 0 so s2 o minus s1 o equals the path difference delta that is equal to lambda that is equal to 2 lambda that is equal to n lambda then that particular point becomes a constructive interference it becomes a bright band the points becomes bright fringe so let us go for destructive interference look at s2 that gives waves that goes to p right how many waves are here right now one wave two wave three wave three and a half waves are there now check how many waves are there between s1 and p one wave two wave and three wave so s2 is accommodating on half wave extra let us check now right at p right the waves coming from s1 and s2 meeting at out of phase they are 180 degree out of phase one goes up one goes down so the effect cancel each other the intensity becomes zero this is called destructive interference you get a dark band so s2 p is the first path s1 p is the second path 
the path difference is delta now it accommodate on half lambda right when s2p minus s1p equals the path difference which is equal to half lambda then we get a destructive interference when this half lambda becomes 3 and half one and half lambda two and half lambda will be getting the same result the points become dark S2O minus S1O equals N lambda means destructive interference. S2P minus S1P equals delta, which is equal to 2N minus 1. 2N minus 1 into lambda by 2 means it is destructive interference. The points become dark. All right. So let us go now. Experimental setup of Young's double slit experiment. Here you have a source. A monochromatic source of light lambda is passed through a slit S. Yes. Correct. So this source is placed in air medium. The whole setup is in air medium. So refractive index, we take it as 1. The lights from S yes, is instant symmetrically placed slits S1 yes, and S2. Yes, S1 yes, and S2 yes, are coherent sources. On the screen, a pattern is visible which consists of alternative bright and dark bands called fringes running parallel to the length of the slit. By this experiment, Eng established the wave nature of light. This is one of the best examples for proving light travels in the form of wave. S2M is the path difference. We denote that by delta. Look at that angle, how it's being formed. Capital D equals OA. The separation between the slits and the screen, it's about 1 meter. Small d is S1, S2. Separation between the two slits, it's about 3 mm. The width of each slit is about 0 0.03 mm. Path difference. So we know that path difference is S2M that is denoted by delta. So delta equal to D sin theta. So for theta, the delta is opposite side. So delta equal to D sin theta. So sin theta equals delta by small d. If theta is small, we can take sin theta as tan theta, which is equal to theta, and from the big triangle. We can say theta equals opposite side by the adjacent side y by d. We replace the sin theta as delta by d, which is equal to y by d. So the path difference delta we found here y small d by capital D. This is very important uh, relation we should remember. So the path difference equals y e delta equals y d by capital D. So let us keep it separately. Delta equals y small d by capital D. Based on the condition of the path difference, the point P may be bright or it may be dark. Let us now work on condition for bright fringe or the maxima. If P is the center of the nth bright fringe, then the path difference must be equals n lambda. We proved a little earlier. So let us replace the delta as y small d by capital D, which is equal to n lambda. From here, we find what is the distance of the nth bright band, which is equal to n lambda capital D by small d. So n equals starts from 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is one of the important formula. So path difference for bright band delta equal to n lambda. And distance of the nth bright band yn equals n lambda capital D by small d. Yn bright equal to n lambda capital D by small d. Let us take n equal to 0. This is center bright band and y0 will be equal to 0. We call it a center bright fringe. So look at the diagram. Let us take n equal to 1. Then y1 bright equals plus or minus lambda capital D by small d. This is called first bright fringe. Look at the diagram. 
they are at a distance y and b which is equal to lambda capital d by small d right where will be the second bright fringe that will be 2 lambda by capital d where will be the third uh, bright fringe it will be 3 lambda capital d by small d that's what is running here if n equal to n then the nth bright fringe will be at plus or minus n lambda capital d by small d it's called nth bright fringe let us go for the second condition for the dark fringe or minimum if the point P is the center of the nth dark fringe, then the path difference delta equals 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. So we have proved this before we start the Young's double slit experiment. So let us replace the delta as, look at the left right co left corner, or delta equal to y small d by capital D equals 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. Now we have to find the distance of the nth dark band, y n dark equals 2n minus 1 lambda capital D by 2 small d. So n starts from 1, 2, 3. Here n cannot be 0 because when you give n equal to 0, path become negative, distance cannot be negative. So we have to start n from 1, not even from 0. So del for dark band is 2n minus 1 lambda by 2 and the distance of the nth dark band equals 2n minus 1 lambda capital D by small d. Let us now work out the distance of the nth dark band. If you substitute n equal to 1, we get y n. y1 dark equals plus or minus lambda capital D by 2d. Right? This is what we call first dark fringe. This is first dark fringe. Here I have made a mistake here. Sorry. So some pretty mistake over here. Here it is dark fringe. Let us go for the y1 dark, right, n equal to 2, then y2 dark will be equal to plus or minus 3 capital D lambda by 2D. So here also it is second dark fringe, right. If n equal to n, then we have nth dark fringe given by plus or minus 2n minus 1 lambda capital D by 2 small d. This world is called as nth dark fringe. Equation for bandwidth. The bandwidth beta is defined as the distance between the center of any two consecutive bright or dark fringe. The bandwidth beta is defined as the distance between the center of any two consecutive bright or dark fringe. So look at the diagram, beta equal to y1 bright minus y0 bright. That is equal to y2 bright minus y1 bright. So in general we can say that beta equals yn bright minus yn minus 1 bright. Let us substitute what is yn from the formula given in the bottom. So y n bright will be n lambda capital D by small d. In the place of n substitute one, n minus 1. So we get next formula. So expanding this formula, we get beta equal to n lambda capital D by small d minus n lambda capital D by small d. These two cancels plus lambda capital D by small d. That is the bandwidth beta. Beta equal to lambda capital D by small d. So we have written it very close to the diagram. Let us keep it below the uh, screen. Beta equal to lambda capital D by small d. This is what the derivation with this, this particular answer has come to an end. So let us go further. Angular width. So look at the diagram. The theta naught is being framed at the uh, center of S1, S2. This angle is from any two bright or any two dark fringe. This angle between any two bright or any two dark fringe formed at the center of S1, S2. So as the bright and dark fringes are of the same width, the angular width of a fringe is given by the formula theta naught equals beta by capital D. 
So let us substitute what is beta, beta equal to lambda capital D by small d. So as we substitute beta as capital D lambda by small d, we get theta naught equal to lambda by small d radian. This is the angular width of the experiment, bright or dark fringe. Theta naught equal to lambda by small d radian. Let us go for tips and tricks for shortcuts. Let us know. Beta is independent of En. So look at the formula beta equal to capital D lambda by small d. So here there is no n term. So beta is independent of n. Beta proportional to lambda. More is the wavelength, more will be the bandwidth. The fringe width of red light are wider than the fringe width of violet light. Angular position of nth bright fringe. Look at the diagram. Right, this is the angular position of the first bright band. So theta equals y n bright by d. So we have already found y n bright. So look at this formula. In this formula, y n b divided by capital D will be equal to n lambda by small d. That is what he given here. So theta is the angular position that is given by n lambda by small d. Let us go for the d angular position of the nth dark fringe that will be again theta equal to y n dark by capital D which is equal to 2 n minus 1 lambda capital D by small d. Now this full setup is placed in a medium of refractive index mu. Now let us go. If YDAC is performed in a medium of refractive index mu, the wavelength in the medium becomes lambda by mu. So lambda is the wavelength in vacuum or air. Lambda prime is the wavelength in medium. So lambda prime will be equal to lambda by mu. So let us go for the formula. Beta prime will be equal to capital D lambda prime by small d. Let us replace lambda prime by lambda by mu. So beta prime will be equal to capital D lambda by mu d. So 1 by mu if we take it out, the remaining term is beta. So 1 by mu times beta is beta prime. So the fringe width decreases because of the presence of the medium because mu is greater than 1. Beta prime will be equal to beta by mu. Look at the diagram. We have changed it to beta prime equal to beta by mu. Right? If bichromatic light is used, the fringes of two wavelengths will be coincident for the first time when y equal to n beta longer equals n plus 1 beta shorter. This is for bichromatic light. All right? So in general formula, n beta L equals n plus 1 beta S. If white light is used, the central band is maximum one. It's a bright one. It's in white color with red edges. On either side of it, we'll have colored bands and then uniform illumination. If white light is used, this is gets repeated, sorry. Constructive interference. We have seen this. For constructive interference, the path difference is equal to n lambda. There is no doubt about it. So then why we have come again to here? It's because time interval between two wave v's, right? S1 O and S2 O. So they have the same number of waves. So there is no uh, time gap. So time gap is zero between these two waves reaching O. So <coughs> for the center bright band, the time gap will be zero. For the first bright band, it will be 1t. For a second bright band, it will be 2t. Right? Resultant amplitude is A max is equal to A1 plus A2. Resultant intensity is I proportional to A square. So we get I max equals A1 plus A2 the whole square. 
So i max equals root i1 plus root i2 the whole square. Let us go for district interference. The path difference equals 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. We get dark fringe. Then the time gap between the two wave is time traveled by that half wave extra. That will be t by 2. Right? So, del t will be equal to 2n minus 1 t by 2. For the first dark, substitute n equal to 1. Uh, yeah, so, then you get 2 minus 1 is 2, 2, 2, 2 minus 1, 1. So, you get t by 2. So, it is half the time period. Alright. Uh, for the second uh, dark fringe, it will be uh, right uh, 3 by 2 capital T. Resultant amplitude is a minimum which is equal to a1 minus a2. Resultant intensity is i proportional to a square. So, i minimum equals a1 minus a2 whole square. i minimum equals root i1 minus root i2 the whole square. Let us go for i max by i minimum the ratio that is equal to a1 plus a2 whole square divided by a1 minus a2 the whole square. So, i max by i minimum equal to root of i1 plus root of i2 the whole square divided by root of i1 minus root of i2 the whole square. Lovely meeting you children. Thank you.